Hi guys and girls, how's it going? Hope you guys have a great week. So it is that time of the month again, guys. It is time to talk about the top five games coming out in August 2019. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. These are just five of the games coming out in the upcoming month that I think look really interesting and that I'm I'm looking forward to. So let's start off then. So the first game coming out next month is Rad. Uh, this is set for release on the 20th of August and it will be available on the Nintendo Switch Switch, PS4, PC and Xbox One. It is developed by Double Fine and published by Bandai Namco. Um, this game looks really interesting. It is basically a 3D action roguelike game um, told from sort of a top-down perspective set in a post post-apocalyptic world uh, where humanity has faced Armageddon not once but twice. Uh, the art style of this game looks really really interesting. It's got very much an 80s vibe. The animation and art style, the music, soundtrack, color scheme, everything is very very 80s and uh, yeah it gives me a huge level of nostalgia. So basically the premise of the game is a toxic poison has covered the world and the only hope for humanity are these effigies called respirators which are dotted across the wasteland um, the task of saving humanity is is put to the brave youth who effectively have to sacrifice themselves to activate these respirators um, whilst fighting off monsters along the way so that the world it can be made habitable but these youth are actually quite unique unique um, because they're able to survive the poisoned atmospheres and they've undergone an overhaul uh, to their DNA uh, which actually makes them susceptible to mutations which are caused by the radiation hence the title rad uh, which obviously is connected to radiation not not the fact that the game is rad even though it looks really really rad um, these mutations basically can give um, these teenagers special perks or abilities uh, to help them them in combat and traversal and you can actually have up to a maximum of three mutations at any given time and sometimes these mutations can actually synergize and work quite well together some of the examples that we've seen are one way you like um, mutate this kind of cobra head um, that spits out poison another one where you uh, grow a third arm that can be thrown at an enemy like a boomerang we got to see a fire arm which can throw fireballs special uh, vine like legs sort of tree like legs which allow you to wrap vines and uh, tree branches around enemies and hold them in place and then you can combo that with a fireball to set these vines on fire and um, it looks really cool I love the art style as you progress through the world you actually leave a trail of like growth and grass and greenery behind you um, as uh, your genes sort of mutate with the world and cause this this greenery to, to form um, it's a very clever way of sort of seeing where you have been and, and obviously where you need to go now you don't play as just one character you actually will play as different teenagers so the character that you're playing as can actually die out in the world and if you do die um, you return back to the base camp and then you pick up the uh, role of another teenager and will continue on to explore but rad looks like a really really interesting concept and uh, it looks really really cool the second game coming out in August is Remnant from the Ashes. This is set for release on the 20th of August and will be available on the PS4, PC and Xbox One. It is developed by Gunfire Games and published by Perfect World Entertainment and it is a third person survival action shooter indie title. It is set in a post-apocalyptic world um, overrun by monstrous creatures. I don't know what it is but this year seems to be the year of apocalypse and post-apocalyptic worlds that seems to be all the craze um, at the moment uh, in terms of sort of video game development so as one of the last remnants of humanity you basically uh, can set out either alone or alongside up to two other players to face hordes of deadly enemies and epic bosses as you try to carve a foothold rebuild and take areas that were lost it's like a dungeon crawler um, survival action shooter and it looks really really cool uh, humanity are basically struggling to survive and they possess special technology 
technology to open up portals into other realms and alternative realities and you explore each of these realms and you can go into each of these realms and through these portals every level is uh, dynamically generated it's a dynamically generated world that can change each time you play through them so your experience of the game and the bosses that you face and the enemies and monsters that you face could be completely different from uh, your friends world and what sort of generates for them and um, each of the bosses will also drop legendary loot and we are told that the loot that you progress and you you develop and gain um, is a big part of the game so loot is going to be a big part of the game but um, this loot will always be legendary. The loot will always have a purpose and it will always be unique to the enemy and the monster um, that you face. The developers said they have been heavily inspired by the Blood Soul series. Um, and you can definitely see that in, in terms of some of the monster design. Um, it, I've got almost sort of kind of Bloodborne vibes from it. And uh, the fights look, you know, really interesting and challenging, um, which is really cool. So it sounds like a cross between like Destiny and um, Monster Hunter World and um, Dark Souls or, or Bloodborne, which is which is really fun sounding. The third game coming out in August is Ancestors: The Humankind Odyssey. This is set for release on the 27th of August, and it will be coming out only on PC um, in August. And then the game will be available later on in December um, across consoles on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. This, of course is developed by Panache Digital Games and published by Private Division. Um, it is headed by the creator of um, Assassin's Creed, specifically um, Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which I actually consider to be some of the best Assassin's Creed games. So that sounds really interesting, um, which is really cool. Um, it's a third person survival game and it just looks like nothing I've seen. Um, you basically embark on an incredible odyssey of human evolution and you actually begin your journey 10 million years ago um, you explore uh, neo gene africa um, basically the dawn of humankind you actually play as an ape um, or a gorilla um, not a specific one character but you actually play as like a clan <coughs> of gorillas so you could play as a, as a baby as a mother as a, as a grown adult male um, and the idea is to sort of explore um, this incredibly dangerous world of Africa and um, expand your territory you know by sort of conquering your fear and exploring new lands to grow your clan and also to evolve, evolve um, yourself um, over generations by sort of deciding what skills to learn and what knowledge to pass on to future generations. Um, you control a member of an ape clan and you actually manage your player's health um, by of course eating, drinking and sleeping. The African jungle itself is a huge open Open world environment and it is filled with threats um, as you explore you can climb up trees you, there is fall damage so you can injure or kill your character and uh, you also have what's called the state of fear um, and that's where you know as you're being hunted by predators or surrounded by sort of, sort of poisonous plants and in a, a kind of very dangerous environment um, you go into the state of fear um, and you can actually reduce that fear by um taking or capturing glowing orbs um, in the world if you fail to do this you actually then go into a state of hysteria um, which I assume then will ultimately lead in, in into your death but it just sounds like a, a game where it's just all about exploration and there's no real objectives that I can see but it, it just looks like an incredibly interesting concept. The fourth game coming out in August is Control um, which is set for release on the 27th of August and will be available on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. Of course this game is developed by Remedy Entertainment and published by 505 Games. The game revolves around the Federal Bureau of Control, the FBC, a secret US government agency tasked with containing and studying phenomena uh, which violates the laws of reality. You play as Jesse Fadden or Faden, um, who becomes the new director of the Bureau when the current director um, dies and players will explore the oldest house. This is the FBA, FBC's um, paranormal 
New York headquarters. Uh, you can utilize incredibly powerful abilities to de defeat a deadly enemy uh, known as the Hiss, who have invaded and corrupted reality um, within the oldest house. Um, gameplay is built very much around uh, Remedy's own Northlight engine, um, which was first used in Quantum Break, and it really shows in the facial animations, the gameplay style, the gameplay animations. It really does very much have familiar vibes to uh, Quantum Break, but it seems a little bit darker, and uh, it definitely has some sort of Max Payne kind of vibes to it, which is really, really cool. Uh, you have your own signature weapon, a service weapon, um, that is a supernatural firearm that can be only wielded by the director of the Bureau, so maybe it's connected to your blood or your fingerprints or something, and um, this supernatural firearm can actually be adapted into various forms, so it can be a pistol, a shotgun, a assault rifle, whatever you basically need it to be. Um, you also have supernatural abilities, so you have abilities like telekinesis, levitation, that sounds fun, I can't wait to try that out and the ability to actually control certain enemies as well. Control looks like a really interesting game. Um, I'm a big fan of Remedy Entertainment. Um, I really enjoyed the Max Payne series. I thought Quantum Break had a lot of potential. Um, it was just let down by some of its implementation and, you know, the focus on sort of the TV series and less on the gameplay. So Control looks good. You know, it looks really interesting. I don't know that much about it. And to be fair, I'm, I'm trying not to uh, look into it too much because there is a lot of gameplay out there and I don't really want to watch it because I don't want to be spoiled. I actually want to jump in play the game and check it out for myself. The fifth game coming out in August is Astral Chain. This is set for release on August the 30th and is exclusively available on the Nintendo Switch. It is developed by Platinum Games and of course published by Nintendo. It's an action video game directed by Takahira Taura who was the lead game design for Nier Automata, an incredibly uh, very very good game that came out on the PlayStation 4 a couple of years ago. Um, the setting for the game, uh, the game world is based in a city uh, called Ark. This is a massive prosperous multicultural city. Uh, disaster basically strikes when mysterious dimensional gates appear, bringing daily, da dangerous alien creatures known as Chimera um, into the world and attacking um, the people of the Ark and also corrupting the land and people around it as well. The Ark police actually form a special task force known as Neuron to face the alien threat. Uh, humanity's last chance actually lies in a special living weapon called the Legion. You play as a rookie neuron officer and you can be either male or female um, it, with a fully customizable character and you and your Legion um, basically have to work together to solve cases save humanity and just basically kick chimera, chimera butt and find out where all these gates are coming from and what is causing these rifts um, into the astral chain. Now, the focus for the combat on this is something called synergetic combat and action. Um, and this is where you have an ability to control uh, two characters, both your neuron officer and also your your legion. Now, the, you can actually switch between different legion types and there are multiple legions. Um, there's a sword legion, a um, sort of armor kind of... Um, sort of melee combat legion uh, a legion that has arrows like a a beast like a like a wolf looking like legion and um, there's so many options and you can switch freely between them and the combat just looks so smooth and amazing it looks like uh you know the the level of um finesse and combat and depth to combat that we would expect from platinum games from the developers of like bayonetta near automata and so on and it's just it's, it just looks incredible it looks so interesting and I think the world looks really interesting too. Um, I do want to give a special honourable mention um, to one other game coming out in August. It didn't make my top five but it is a game that I am interested in and that is Man of Medan which is set for release on August the 30th. It will be available on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. Of course it's developed by Supermassive Games and published by Bandai Namco. This is the team that brought us Until Dawn. 
it's a very similar style game and um, because until dawn did pretty well um they decided supermassive games that they actually are wanting to release a series of games this is actually an interactive drama horror game and it's set to be the first installment in the dark pictures anthology series so supermassive games apparently are planning to release a new game every six months um that will tie in together and sort of focus on different genres um, that we see in, in horror movies and that kind of thing. Um, the general premise of the game, it revolves around a group of Americans that are traveling to the South Pacific Ocean for a vacation, but as the storm approaches, they find themselves actually trapped in a sunken, cursed ghost ship along with its captain. The game of course is played in third person and you assume control of five different characters who are trapped on the ghost ship. Um, you will need to make different decisions and select different dialogue options and the narrative of the story will adapt to these choices. It is of course possible to keep all playable characters alive or actually have them all die and action sequences of course like, like Until Dawn. Um, but mainly involve quick time events. Uh, you can of course um, also find what are called dark pictures um, which give characters premonitions of um, how they die or what's coming up or what dangers might occur so that you can make different choices. But uh, Man of Medan looks looks really good. Um, I enjoyed Until Dawn and uh, I think there definitely is a niche for these kind of games and it looks really interesting um, which, it, which is why it is an honorable mention this month. So there you go, there are the top five games coming out in August 2019. Uh, let me know what you guys think of these games in the comment section below. Which games are you looking forward to, uh, which are coming out in August? Which games are you planning to buy and planning to play? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know if I missed anything on this list that you would include as well. Please share that below as well. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. Take care and as always, happy gaming. Bye guys.